All right, we are going to take a look at electron configuration. This will go with the um, handout for the fill in the blank notes for this PowerPoint. So make sure you have that ready. It would also be helpful to have either some colored pencils or some um, highlighters of different colors available so you can color code some things and um, make your notes very useful to you. So take a look at this um, set of numbers and letters and I want you to think about what you see here. So some of the things that um, electron configurations are made of are some different numbers out in front. We have letters that appear in the middle and then we have some exponents. Each of these pieces are basically making up an address for our electrons. So we're finding out where the electrons are in our atoms. First, we are going to start with the numbers in the front. Those are going to represent our energy levels. If you have different colored pens or pencils, you can um, highlight up at the top of your page the numbers in front or put a box around them um, and use this section in the same color and write down your notes in the same color. Just a thought. And so the numbers in front are our energy levels. Um, the electrons fill from the lowest energy level to the highest energy level. We can see on the side of the periodic table that there are numbers along the side and those represent our energy levels. So we have seven different energy levels and our electrons fill in a very specific um, order there. You can also see that the color coding on the periodic table itself um, is banded across the periods, but that the center section where our transition metals are, it doesn't match the color that the period begins and ends in. And that's going to come in as we fill our orbitals. And I'll talk about why that happens a little later. So this would be a good opportunity to pause the video and color code the periodic table as you see here, um, or at least label so you understand where the different um, energy levels line up and how they correspond to um, the different sections. So where the transition metals are and the inner transition metals at the bottom, because it is a little bit different. The next thing that we can see is that our electron configuration has letters, and those letters are going to represent the different orbitals and their shapes. So the letter indicates the shape of that orbital. S, I like to say, is for sphere, so it can hold a maximum of two electrons. We have our p orbital, those three orbitals um, in the p shape and they can hold a maximum of six electrons, so two electrons each. Then we have the d orbital, and there are actually five different orbitals to that one, so five different shapes, and they can each hold two electrons, so a maximum of ten electrons. And then the f orbital has seven different orbitals, so seven different shapes, and it can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. So between these orbitals, we will actually be able to fit all of our electrons for every atom on the periodic table because we don't just have these orbitals but we have these orbitals in every single energy level well, in most of the energy levels um, for instance the s orbital is in every single energy level we can see um, our periodic table is broken up into different blocks we have the s block p block d block and f block so that splits up our splits up the periodic table and shows where we start filling each orbital. So we're not only going to look at what energy level we're in, but also which area of the periodic table to see which orbital filling. A good idea if you have the resources to go ahead and color code your second mini periodic table on your sheet so that you have an idea of where the different blocks are on the periodic table. 
What you see here are the different shapes that we have for the orbitals. We have the S orbital, so that's the sphere shape. We have our three P orbitals. They um, are pointed in different directions or oriented differently. So one along the X axis, one along the Y axis, and one along the Z axis, since this is in three dimensions. And um, so each of those would hold two electrons. Then we have our D orbital. We have five different shapes to it. So again, each of those would be along different axes. And then our last one will be on the next slide. And this one is our F orbital. So it has those seven different shapes um, along different axes and it makes up or it can hold up to 14 electrons. Last but not least is the exponents. The numbers in the exponent position are representing the number of electrons in that set of orbitals. So in a, an s orbital in a particular energy level or in a set of p orbitals in a particular energy level. So electrons can have two spins, either an up spin or a down spin, indicated by a half arrow pointing up or down. They spin in opposite directions from each other, and it's because they're both negative, so they want to repel, and something they have to have some way of not completely repelling each other so they can occupy the same space. Electrons fill these orbitals in a very specific way. Electrons fill groups of these boxes, so this is going to be our orbital diagram, these boxes. So the electrons will fill groups of boxes before moving on to the next group. And electrons don't really like to share their individual orbitals because, like I said, they are negative. They're both um, going to want to repel each other. So they will fill an upspin first in every orbital and then in that group before pairing up with a downspin. So we can see here we have um, a, an orbital diagram, and if we wanted to fill this up, we would start with our 1s orbital. We would fill up both electrons, so an up spin and a down spin. We would then move to our 2s orbital, and we would fill the up spin and the down spin. And when we move to our 2p orbital, we would start on the left and fill each of the boxes with one electron with an upspin and then pair it with the electron going down for the um, downspin. So I always think about it like in at home if you have a little brother or sister you really don't want to have to share a room with them until you absolutely have to. So if you have three bedrooms then we're going to spread out everybody until you actually have to start pairing up. So we're going to take a look at our first example it is oxygen. So first I want you to take a minute, find oxygen on your periodic table, and record the number of electrons it has. You should have found that it has 8 electrons because it is number 8 on our periodic table. We will begin placing electrons in the diagram by placing an up arrow and a down half arrow into each box. When you get to the p orbitals, we're going to fill each box and then begin pairing them. So we get our 1s orbital, so the first energy level, it's, we come to the s orbital first, so we're going to put an up arrow and then a down arrow. Our 2s orbital we come to next because we move to the second energy level and we always come to the s orbital first, so we fill it with an up arrow and a down arrow. As we move across the periodic table to where we get to boron and carbon, um, we start moving across. So we're in the, two P, the second energy level, the P section of our periodic table, and we want to add four more electrons. So we're going to start um, by placing an up arrow in each box, first box, second box, third box. And then to get our last electron, we're going to place it in the first box as a down arrow and pair it. So we want to separate them and then begin pairing the electrons. So once we have our orbital diagram, we can translate that into our electron configuration of the atom. So we have 1s and it has two electrons. 
and then we have 2s and it has two electrons and then our 2p orbital has four electrons total. So our electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Note that there are no commas anywhere or dashes or colons anywhere in the electron configuration. You just list them all out next to each other. So we're going to take a look at another example. This one's a little bit more complex. So we're going to try and find the electron configuration for iron. So our first thing we need to do is figure out how many electrons it has. So iron is going to have going to have 26 electrons. So we're going to start at the S block where hydrogen and helium are. So they are our first electrons that we're going to fill. So we're in the first energy level in the S block. So we have our one up arrow and our down arrow. Next, we come to, we finished period one. So now we come to period two in the S block again. So we're going to fill two electrons. So the first up arrow and a down arrow. We're going to continue across the periodic table to the P block where we have six elements and we need to fill six electrons. So we're in the second period in the P block. So we have an up, up, and up, and then the three down arrows. So all of this to fill our P orbital, 2P orbital. Next, we come to the S block again where sodium and magnesium are, and we have to get all the way to iron. So we're going to go ahead and fill up that 3S orbital. Next, we're going to go cross from it to where the 3P orbital is, and we need to fill the three up arrows and then the three down arrows, fill up the 3P block. Then we come to the fourth energy level where we have the S orbital. And we're going to go ahead and fill that. And this is where it gets slightly tricky. And some of you may not have learned this last year. We have the 3D orbital. So in even though we are in the fourth energy level, what they have found through research is that um, the next electrons that start to fill actually fall down to the previous energy level. So instead of adding to the fourth energy level, um, they actually add to the third energy level. So we label this the 3D orbital. So we are going to go all the way to iron. So we need to get to the sixth electron. So we need six electrons. One, two, three, four, five up arrows. And then our sixth one is a down arrow. And that gives us all 26 electrons for um, our iron atom. And now we can take this and translate it into our electron configuration. So we should have that 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and so on. So we're, our end should have 3d6. So we can see that is our complete electron configuration for iron. So on your paper, there are um, two more to try. You've done seen oxygen and iron. I want you to try the next two and then come back and check your answer. So pause right now. All right, so hopefully you've tried those out. You've done your orbital diagram and the electron configuration. So what you should have gotten for the first one, rubidium, is this. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. So we drop down to that 3d orbital. We have 4p6 and then 5s1. So rubidium, that means rubidium is in the fifth energy level and it is the first element in that row. So this is like our roadmap to finding the rubidium. It tells us where all of our electrons are. The next one was chlorine. So you should have um, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. So chlorine should be in the third energy level in the p block and should be the fifth element over. 
Um, you have two more to try. They are to identify the element based on the electron configuration. So try using that electron configuration as your roadmap to finding the elements and then check back to check your answer. So pause the video now. All right, hopefully you were able to find those elements. So the first one should be arsenic. So if you follow the periodic table and its electron configuration, you should find arsenic. A shortcut way um, of doing this is to also just count all the exponents, add them up, and that should add up to your number of electrons for the atom. And the second one should be zirconium. So in, um, in our fifth energy level, but in the D section, should be the 4D um, orbital, and it should be the second element over. So we do have a shorthand method to make writing these long electron configurations easier, um, so you can use this method. We use the noble gases, they're on the right side of our periodic table, to take the place of part of the electron configuration. This makes it so we only have to add on the parts that come after the noble gas to make the element. For example, phosphorus. There's its electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. Or it can be shortened using the noble gas that comes before it, which is neon. So we write phosphorus, its symbol. We write neon in brackets, and then 3s2, 3p3. So neon, that symbol for it in the brackets, takes place of the 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6 because that is the electron configuration for neon. We put neon in brackets so to set it apart from the rest of um, the electron configuration so we can clearly see that we're using neon. Check. Um, so we're going to try out the ones that were already done on your worksheet. Um, so oxygen and iron and rubidium and the ones up above, go back and do their shorthand and then check them here. So hopefully you've checked your answers. So oxygen, you should use helium because that's the noble gas that comes before oxygen. And then we need the rest of it to make it oxygen, so 2s2, 2p4. For iron, you need to use argon as its noble gas, so 4s2 and then 3d6 to make it into, into um, iron. Rubidium, you should use krypton, so rubidium comes immediately after krypton on our periodic table, so all we need after it is 5s1 to indicate that it's an extra electron that makes it rubidium. And then for chlorine, you just need, you need neon because that's the element that can't, or the, um, noble gas that comes before it, and then you need 3s2 and 3p5 to make it into chlorine. So um, that should be everything. Hopefully you understand or have reviewed now electron configurations. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you send me a message and ask or come ready to ask in class um, after break. Thanks. Oh, sorry, I have one more thing. Um, so notice, I want you to notice in each of these electron configurations, thought you were done, um, that after the noble gas, each of these start with an S orbital. So because the noble gases are on the right side, the next thing that should come to fill in the next element, to fill in all the rest of the electrons for the next element is um, an S orbital. So you should always have an S orbital next. Okay, now we're done.